What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to our first live podcast uh, that we've had quite a bit of time, actually. It's been almost two months since our last one. We've been sidetracked with a few projects and uh, shop work, but uh, finally got everything together well enough that we can do one of these and just in time because it seems that it's warming up all around the country, so everyone's back in, getting back into riding season, so... We have races starting, riding groups getting yeah, uh, going. Yeah, the races kicked off. We'll talk about that. They kicked off a couple of weekends ago. I think two weekends ago um, was the first race of the season. Um, so as you guys may know, my name's Greg Hall. I'm here with uh, my partner, my business partner and friend and uh, fellow co-owner of w, uh, PwC Muscle, Joe Zamataro. You may recognize him from uh, some of our build series what's uh, going on guys thank you for joining us yeah thanks for thanks for tuning in here so yeah we have a few different things that we're going to be talking about today and let's let's get right into it with uh the p1 that was down in miami a couple of weeks ago that uh kind of got uh not, not a good way to start the season off uh only got to do um one round due to uh bad weather so and a few safety issues i believe yeah yeah it, um didn't exactly go as smoothly as some of the other races have gone uh, in terms of getting additional rounds in, or not necessarily rounds, but uh, races. They were only able to complete one. Yeah. But um, some interesting things happened in in the completion of that that one race. Uh, first of all, congrats to uh, Eric Francis. Um, he got the big win on the the, the one race of the weekend, yeah. um, which is real exciting to to see. I mean. They, they, the guy's fast, and riding on this Yamaha is going to be really tough to see if anyone can, you know, upset them if they're uh, if they're racing head to head. Yeah, it's a great way to start the season off the with a with a win, even with a shortened race. It's great to have a win right out of the gate. I got I got some. Let's see if I can play oh, some of the some. video from uh, that was on uh, some on YouTube. This is from the Florida Riding Group. Let's see. <laughs> All right, there we are. So, um, yeah, well, that's that's play. And the other thing that was uh, pretty pretty exciting uh, for me is that in second place was uh, Armino, and he he was racing on one of the new RXTXs from SeaDo, and that's the the new platform that uh, you know we've been talking about that that came out this year yeah. or this model year, and I uh, was really excited to see how it would do in one of these races and. I mean, riding it personally, it's it's a it's just so it's so stable and it's yeah. it's uh, got a lot lower center of gravity and that's seeing them get second place is uh, encourages additional competition, uh, yeah. showing that other makes will be able to compete. Yeah, the, everyone probably knows that Yamaha really took over last season, so it, it's good to see Cdu back in the mix. Um, we have a. Joe got to go down to Revo Motorsports a few weeks ago to one of their media events and got to ride um, the GP1800 R, their R series, and the new RXTX platform back to back. What, what's, uh, what did you think of those? <clears throat> the um, RXT was, uh, I think, it had their Stage Three package on it. Yeah. Um, one thing about it is the way that they had it tuned and set up. There was uh, virtually no cavitation, and the thing just just ripped. Um, you know, I've, I've said on a, a couple of previous podcasts, and a lot of you guys know, I was in a, a nice car accident uh, back in July, and it uh, really has limited the amount of uh, stress my neck and back can take. So that that machine was far, far outperforming what uh, the paces I could put it through. Um, it's really exciting to see, and I, like I said, I've been really uh, anxious to see what sort of results they can get in the races from it because it's it's an amazing platform. Yeah, well, it was a good start to the season for them, go, taking second. Yeah, even though it was as we as we said only one round, so it's a it's a short uh, race, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens in the next leg. Well, yeah. So I mean, they have. Um, I mean, there's the Kissimmee Saint Cloud race that's coming up on May 12th, which is like the amateur um, race. But the next big one is going to be June 17th 
pretty much in our backyard at St. Pete Beach. Um, can pretty much guarantee that uh, at least one of us will be there. Uh, maybe we'll we'll get ambitious and try to do a podcast live from the from the beach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if if you see us there, we'll we'll have some free gear. So if you want a shirt or stickers or whatever, uh, stop in. You know, maybe we'll have a tent set up. Maybe we won't. We'll see. We'll see how the weekend goes. <laughs> our our weekends are turning into weekdays, um, which is great. I mean, you guys are awesome, uh, keeping us busy. So that's a good thing. Meaning we're working all throughout the weekend in order to you know Pretty take much. care of our customer service, fulfill orders, do shop work, and um, yeah, I mean it's yeah like Greg said, it's been it's been good. Uh, it just keeps us real real busy. Absolutely. Yeah. So June seventeenth, um, and then two weeks from that is the. Uh, like the 4th of July weekend race is, is what it always is. It's uh, July 1st, or uh, I'm sorry, um, June 30th and July 1st, and that's the one in Sarasota. So you got two um, locations pretty close to each other and two, uh, you know, uh, two weeks apart. So they're, you know, the races are, duration are close to each other as well. Yeah, yeah, and if you guys are able, even if you're not riding, if you're able to make it out to the events just to check it out, it's, it's a fun time, uh, you know, and the more people, the better. Yeah, so um, I think that uh, you know making early predictions on the on the races. I really hope to see one of those RXTs in a in a top five finish for the for the season. Now that we've got one race under the, its belt, uh, yeah. it's going to be a lot to to be able to um, live up to because you still got to get past you know other other really seasoned riders like uh, uh, obviously Francis McCluggage. Uh, you got Brian Baldwin. You got I mean, geez, you got so many guys here that are riding the Yamahas, and um, see, Legopolis is on a is on one as well. I forgot about that. And uh, newcomer to the pro um, uh, to the pro races is Sophie Francis, who has been tearing it up. It's Eric Francis's wife. She was tearing it up in the amateur class, and and yeah. well, good enough to to compete against um, compete in the the pro enduros. So I, I, so I, I have a prediction that we'll, we'll see, we will see a sea in the top five and we'll see if that, that comes to fruition by the uh, end of the racing season here. Yeah. I, I think that you're right. I, I think that uh, a, a Yamaha is still going to take it, but uh, that's has partly to do with the riders that are riding the Yamahas too. So, <laughs> well, I hope that a Yamaha takes it. Yeah. And always rooting for, uh, you know, uh, Eric Francis and, and, a, and a lot of the other guys and, yeah. uh, you know, Sophie, let's see you get up there in, in the in the top three as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It'd be yeah, it'd be great to see her on the board there too. So, um, moving on, uh, we wanted to touch on we we discussed this in past uh, pods, but uh, our friends over at uh, WNY PWC um, have an event coming up July twenty first. It's going to be huge. They're they're saying that. Uh, you might have upwards of 100 skis out there. Um, there's a bunch of people that are putting this show on. Um, it's really a, a group effort, it seems. Um, we have a few guys over there, uh, Cameron and uh, Craig, that uh, we've been speaking to quite a bit, and they've been kind of filling us in with everything. So it's it's been fun to follow along, <laughs> see their, their event grow. Every time I talk to them, it seems like they have a new sponsor and new stuff to give away. So if you're, if you're up there... You know, your chances of winning something if you go to this event seem pretty good at this point uh oh, check yeah. them out on on facebook just if you just type in the the search bar on top uh wny pwc owners they have um a page a group join the group uh join in you know it's for everyone up there in that area so it looks like it looks like they have sponsorships from like yamaha reva pro rider uh hydro turf i uh, just saw that they have a jet trim seat cover they're going to give away we're one of their their sponsors mm -hmm. i mean all the there's more big names on there. They got a nice banner up here on their uh, Facebook page showing off all the stuff that they're giving away. And yeah. um, w one thing I got, a, I got a picture here from uh, Cameron in the group. He was he was proud to show this off. They uh, his ski rocking the PWC Muscle logo. Uh, oh yeah, he went all out. He, he said <laughs> Cam, Cam said uh, send send us the biggest logo you can make that'll fit on my ski. So, so thanks for representing, brother. Yeah, that, thanks, uh, Cam. Looks, looks awesome on there. Yeah, it turned out. It turned out nice. He's he's uh, slowly modifying that thing. It's gonna be a beast when he's done. He's gotten a ton of stuff for it. He's basically uh, up to a stage two at this point. 
Oh, maybe maybe he's trying to make it a sleeper. We shouldn't tell all of his uh, <laughs> all of his stuff. Yeah. yeah. With um, kind of on that note, um, something that we haven't we haven't talked about and haven't uh, shared yet. One of the things that's been keeping us busy, and um, just wanted to tease it out there is we do have for the GP eighteen hundred coming out relatively soon. It'll be out before this ride. Um, a steering system that um, that we're putting together, and, and Cameron's one that has been real excited about that as well, and and um, just wanted to tease it out there because it's I think it's going to be worth the, the wait, and it's going to be worth us having skipped a couple of podcasts to work uh, work extra on it, and um, I'm really excited to, to yeah. get that thing get that thing uh, built and and um, be able to provide it for you guys. Yeah, it'll be it'll be cool to have out there the the way that uh it's being made is is different than some of the other competitors so if you think that it's just a a, we'll leak more information as as we get closer we're we're having it thoroughly tested and uh and improvements made before before ever uh, putting it on the market so it's we're getting real close and and uh yeah just saying just saying it's not gonna be the exact same thing as some of the competitors we'll leave it at that you guys guys will be very happy Well, good. Where do we go from here? Um, well, we can talk about um, some of the um, videos that that uh, we've done or not done, for that matter. Yeah. Um, kind of update everybody on our video schedule. Yeah. So we're still trying to get get back going with that uh, the GP series. We we have uh, a few videos recorded, um, not cut and edited yet. So that's something we're going to work on. Um, we'll try to get some more videos done. In the next couple of weeks, Joe can tell you better about uh, what what's coming up. Yeah, sure. So um, one thing that we've done in our previous builds with uh, some of the other skis is we've had, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> we've had the performance results for every single part that we put in, and um, that way you've been able you can see exactly which parts give the best uh, results. It's been pretty um, labor intensive in order to do it that way. Mostly because um, I'm kind of a stickler for getting as close to the scientific method as possible. Meaning, I want to make sure that we're within a few degrees uh, of temperature, both on the water uh, or in uh, for water temperature and air temperature, um, similar wind conditions and similar weights uh, fuel uh, that's on board. And it's given us some great data that really uh, highlights what every single modification will do for you. Um, the only downside to that is it, it slows us way down when we're um, trying to install parts. Got to wait for the right weather, the right timing. If the weather is perfect but we're slammed, don't get to go out in the water. And then uh, on top of that, with um, my neck BS I've been dealing with, bouncing around on there just it absolutely kills me. I, uh, I mean, we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. So what we're going to do moving forward is just um, show you get, get the installs done. All right, so just do install videos. We're not going to go through um, all the performance results, but this way we can get fresh content to you guys. Uh, yeah. Show you how to install some of these more complex parts that um, sometimes can be intimidating, but really aren't too bad if you have someone to follow along with. It allows us to to also keep regular with putting out content rather than uh, waiting so long. So um, bear with us. We're we're going to produce it and, and put yeah. some stuff out regularly here it just won't be quite as uh, comprehensive as having the those tuning results yeah absolutely and if you want to have an influence on what what we're doing and what we're putting out it's always a good thing to kind of put your two cents in join us on pwcextreme.com because we, we're talking about this stuff <clears throat> all the time on there um just basically a chat forum you can use your facebook account to log in in about two seconds it doesn't take time i know a lot of people mm-hmm. don't like signing up for stuff but you just click log in with facebook and you're in yeah we've had a lot of requests for doing the supercharger penning video um and, yeah, uh, and a couple of others shaft. yeah so we'll, we'll that's um some of our next stuff that we're gonna we're gonna get um going here after yeah. we've and of course we'll have something for the steering system too oh yeah yeah that's yeah that goes without saying yeah so oh, yeah, uh, excited to put that out. We've got um, uh, a couple of videos from when we were at Riva that we're going to put out here. It's just been a little bit slow doing the uh, editing on them. Uh, so yeah, look forward to this summer having um, a lot of content like we've provided in, in years past. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I want to go back over the 
for anyone that has a GP or um, really a lot of the any ski from Sea-Doo to Yamaha, the, the pods that we're doing, um, starting to pick up in sales quite a bit. And a lot of people are using them. A lot of people are liking them. Uh, so check those out. If you go to pwcmuscle.com, type in uh, P3 Labs, and all the different pods will come up. If one's available for your ski, it'll, it'll uh, populate in the list there. So to be uh, specific for you guys, these are um, gauge pods that allow you to mount your boost gauges, your engine temperature gauges. Uh, we even have it set up for the GP1800 that you can put your TTO tack right into these pods. Yeah. They look good. It has, offers like a factory uh, finish on them. It mm -hmm. uh, keeps them invisible area, and that way you're not just uh, basically drilling right into your uh, fiberglass yeah. or into Or just having it hanging, panels. Yeah. hanging somewhere <laughs> that... Yeah. It looks terrible and it falls off every 10 minutes. The other thing too are the, these pods are 100% customizable. If if you want to if you want to set it up so you can put your cell phone in there, all you need to do is just send us the dimensions of your cell phone. We can get it made perfectly for to fit. Yeah, um, let us know what you guys are looking for. So um, I mentioned that uh, you know I get back to you know, talk about being on the water. So last weekend was uh, only my second, my first time on salt water since being in. Uh, my car accident um got out on a boat for a while we were at saint augustine uh the weather is was just perfect um bounced around a little bit still wasn't uh <laughs> confident and going fast enough to really jostle my head around but man season is is upon us we're in we're in may and uh you know yeah. it's it's amazing it's coming how, up quick i mean it's yeah it's already like you said it's already may everyone warming up it's uh what did you say cool it was? See. It was like eighty. It's in the eighties up in New York today. I saw, which is a change from everyone. What everyone's been telling me the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, I mean, um, I, I was talking to a few people that are in Michigan that were uh, a couple of them that are looking forward to putting their uh, docks in and and getting getting out on the on the lakes and or at least yeah. preparing for it. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's exciting. Um. So one other thing in the uh, personal watercraft world to uh, talk about is that um, there's another podcast out there that um, that has been started, and that's the Watercraft Network. And it's a good group of guys, and uh, definitely you should check them out. They do a weekly podcast on uh, – uh, it's a live podcast like ours, um, but they do it at a much more convenient time for everyone to tune into. <laughs> they do 7.30 on Wednesdays. Um, and you can check them out at – facebook.com slash watercraft network and yeah. next week we should be able to be do uh to do a um call in with them and uh do a little bit of uh q and a and and some uh just hang out on their on their podcast for a little while so definitely give a listen that should be um wednesday which is the let's see the ninth at seven thirty. yeah they have uh um yearly uh event that so we've sponsored the last couple of years and we're going to be sponsored again i was trying to pull up the date and everything for it uh, i don't have it right now but we'll we'll add it into uh the notes here of the of this podcast once once i have the date and everything for it otherwise we'll, we'll give you all Actually, that information i think i, I think i it? yeah i have it it's uh jet fest yeah and it's, it's jet fest it's, it's june it's 23rd june 23rd mm -hmm. and okay. at this at this uh they're they are raffling they have a big raffle going on Aren't they raffling off like a spark or something? They're raffling off a 2018 Sea Dew Spark. Uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. The entry fee for the event is twenty dollars, and I don't see quite on here where the uh, price per raffle ticket is. It might be twenty dollars per ticket as well. Um, don't quote me on that one, but you can find more information with uh, with those guys. That's going to be on at um, Friday, June twenty second at six p.m. And this is at uh, in Mayfield, New York, at the Northampton Beach Campground. Yeah, so that's another another big event in New York. So they're, they're doing it right in New York. I'll have to take a trip up there and uh, and ride <laughs> with, with some of these guys. Yeah, for sure. We definitely need to get up there. All right, so well, so how about uh, you know talk about the NHL playoffs a little bit? I would be very remiss if we didn't. <laughs> I mean, this is such an exciting time of year if you're a hockey fan, and especially if you're if one your team's from, still in it. If your team's <laughs> if your team's still in it, uh, I was speaking to to someone earlier today that uh, 
that's from Toronto that unfortunately They're probably rooting for us. Probably because who who really likes Boston, you know? Unless you're from Boston. Oh geez, <laughs> from from Boston proper or from the greater Boston, Massachusetts area? Well, I, I think or Rhode Island. I know yeah. most people from Rhode <laughs> Island are pretty big Boston. But yeah, it's it's really fans. it's really exciting. Um, I've been using that word way too much today, but it is very exciting. Very exciting. No, it's uh, it's two one in our series against Boston for for Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, if you're a Tampa Bay. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, it's hard not to be a Lightning fan. It's it's a, a, a team that has really taken over this area. There's more Lightning fans that you'll see out and about in this area than there are um, Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans or Rays fans, for that matter. So it's something that this area has really taken hold of, and, and um, everyone's caught like Lightning fever here. So they played last night against Boston Bruins at uh, in Boston and got a huge win. Um, there was one, it was, I won't necessarily call it a lucky goal that Boston scored, but it just as easily could have been a shutout for the lightning. Yeah. And we, we won, uh, four goals to one and the next game is tomorrow night. They're Boston's a scary team though, man. Watch, watching them play. They have a lot of people that say they have one line. They ha- they really have two lines because Krejci's line can play yeah. really well too. They just been kind of neutralized by. Well, um, for the that, lighting, you've just been playing so fast and so defensively responsible. For that matter, though, our top line's been completely neutralized as well. Yeah. Stamkos, Kucherov, um, they didn't have any points. Kuch, in, although Kuch looked pretty good last night, Kucherov looked pretty good last night in in you know in, in, doses, in certain but, uh, yeah in certain scenarios. But there's also been way too many opportunities for him to score where he hasn't put it into an open net where he's got. He's got room, I'd say at least 15% of the net open, which is a huge amount. Yeah. And he's missing his shots. So he... Uh, he had a breakaway that uh, almost went in. Almost, yeah. Yeah. But uh, Ra- Rask about has been pretty big, too. I mean, they, they could have easily huge. won the first game. A lot of the... They, you know, they ended up scoring, I think, six goals. But a lot of those, if you rewatch them, they bounced off players and then just went They're, in. They're, yeah, fluky. Found the back of the net. Yeah, fluky goals for the most part. I will say, though, the, the officiating was terrible last night, and I thought that it worked out in favor of the Lightning because oh. there were some calls that should have been against the Lightning mm-hmm. that, that were just almost obvious that uh, weren't called. Well, I mean, I, I just think that serves them right. It does. When, when when you're trying to bite the referee, I mean, Brad Marchand bit the – what was that, game one or game two where he bit the referee? Oh, I – Did you even see that? I didn't see that at no, all. He actually bit the referee. Nice. Um, so you got to expect the ref not to like well, you when you do stuff like that. I just I just go back to when they stole a Stanley Cup away from the Lightning in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, in game seven, there wasn't a single penalty called. At the time, the, the Bruins was the most penalized team in the league versus the Lightning the least – and um, never got a single penalty called in that entire game, which greatly benefit the Bruins, um, and they won by a goal. They won by a single goal going to the Stanley Cup Finals against the Vancouver team that was, uh, I mean, they were they gave it their all just to get to the Finals and, and were ran over by Boston for the yeah. most part. Yeah, I, and I think that kind of played into... So serves them right. You know, last series... Toronto took them seven, and then we had mm-hmm. a whole week. That first game, we just looked tired. We, I mean, we looked out of it, but now they're showing that they're they're looking tired. They're looking really tired. They've played a lot more hockey than we have in mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks, and I think that's kind of catching up to them. So hopefully that plays in our favor. If, if the Lightning can win tomorrow night, then... There's been some, some other really good games, too. I mean, all the other series have been yeah. pretty how, interesting. How about that, how about that San Jose-Vegas <laughs> series? Yeah, one game. Se- the first one game, game was seven, seven to nine. zero, and then they just they just didn't. Uh, the Sharks win like five nothing last night. Yep, yep. So was it was it five? I was I, think I was, was watching five, four. It's four nothing. It's four nothing. Either way, that's still. Oh yeah, sizable. Especially when uh, the the Knights looked unstoppable all season. Yeah, they. Um, I, but, I thought that they had steamrolled the Sharks. Honestly, yeah. And they don't even have Joe Thornton playing for the Sharks. Yeah, he's still he's still sidelined with injury. Yeah, I mean, he Although skated Joe, warm-ups. Joe Thornton, just like Zidane Chara, they're shells of what they used to be, man. But he can still put a put a pass on your tape that no one else can, can yeah. stop. Yeah. No, I mean, is what it is at this point. The guy's almost 40 years old, or however yeah. old he is. Yeah, so let's, I know he's older than me. Let's so. see. All the series are within one game right now. Like the Jets and um, 
and uh, Predators. Winnipeg's leaving that leading that two to one, but that's been a really like uh, I haven't watched honestly. I haven't watched any of that series. I I have watched the Vegas games because for some reason I'm drawn to them. Mm-hmm. But I can uh, understand that. I haven't watched the Winnipeg. Uh, Did you watch? I know uh, Winnipeg's a team I would not want to play in the finals. Winnipeg can. I was they, betting they it was going to be. Bash us. I was well. I mean, they're maybe, so big. Maybe you know. I, I remember the the regular season games against them. It, it, they just they destroyed us. It didn't look close. But I think both games they won. Well, both games that we played against uh, the Knights, they Golden Knights, they won as well. Yeah, but they were that was I think one. Actually, both games were really close. Remember the one game in Vegas? They scored. It was a tie game, and they scored with like six seconds left to beat us. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That one was close, and then the second one I don't think was close. I don't. I can't remember off the top yeah. of my head now, but I know we lost both. Well, that was the later part of the season. They, Lightning were losing to everybody at that point. It's yeah. like they were trying to get everything in order. And then you got the uh, Washington Pittsburgh series too. That uh, mm-hmm. two games well, ago, Ovechkin stepping up, man. That was that was ridiculous <laughs> to, to score get the like game that. Winner with and less than score, two minutes left. The the best part was he scored Crosby style. Did you see that? He hit the post and then oh, knocked batted it, yeah, and battered it into the goal for the, the first, winning. The first time that I saw it, I thought that like uh, you know you see the the puck rocket into the net a second later than uh, he took the shot, which is mm-hmm. you know it should be instant. It's like how you know what did that hit off of? And then you, and then they show a different angle and they show him he hits the post, it comes back out and he just bats yeah. it into the net. That yeah, that I have, was I have that been was intense. Watching some of that when I've been able to. That, That's been a good series. That was yeah a lot of energy in that one, and uh, I don't know if they can. They can fully beat Pittsburgh, but I mean, it'll, uh, it'll, it's always makes for a good series between those two. Yeah. The whole Ovechkin I still think, versus Crosby I still think, argument. I still think Pittsburgh wins. I just do. I, I don't know. But, you know, Pittsburgh last night, they were playing without a few of their key guys. They're, they're beat up right now. So I think that might be the wild right, card. So, but the thing uh, is that they still have Malkin and they still have Crosby. They still have Latang. All right. So, so let's, let's, do you have the, uh, the bracket pulled up? Mm mm. All right, I'll just send it to you so it's it's easy to, to just look at. Um, who do you think in the bracket? I'll go I'll go for mine first. Um, who's going to move on to the next round? So for uh, Predators Jets, I'm going. It's really hard to say because if Line A keeps playing the way that he's playing and and Bufflin keeps his legs, uh, Jets are hard to beat. But I kind of like the Preds. I still say I'm the Predators Preds. pull it out. All right. So then we got uh, Golden Knights and San Jose Sharks. I'm going now. I'm saying the Sharks. Now are I'm going. Win. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. I'm going Sharks. Uh, this is the first time that we've seen the Golden Knights actually look um, beatable, and yeah. I think it's scaring them. To be and then I'll, then I'll say the Pens are going to win, and I'm not going to say in, the in our series. It's yeah. a ho- it's a hockey thing. I don't want to jinx it. Oh, I fully fully understand. So Tampa versus uh, the Bruins and. And Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're up two one now, though, so that's a good spot to be if you're Tampa, especially when uh, you know seventy two hours ago it was one zero and everyone thought the sky was falling because Boston beat them six to two. Yeah, yeah, very true. Oh, that's your phone. Is that me? Nope. Then we'll call him back. Yeah, I had it on mute too. <laughs> it's on mute again. <laughs> must be. Must be. Uh... Someone that gets through on mute, an important call. Yeah. I have one or two of those. I think if I have my phone set up, so if, uh, if like, my main contacts dial twice within 15 minutes, it'll, uh, it'll override my, my oh, settings. Oh, your settings? Yeah. Yeah, that, I should do that, too. I, I need to get a new phone. I, I'm still on a uh, – I have a Note, but it's a 4. I think the 4 came out in, like, 2012. So it's, <laughs> like, six years. I don't think Honestly. it's been quite that long, but <laughs> – um, yeah, I've been liking this eight since I since I got it. I mean, it's it's done well for me. I hear that the nine might be coming out in September, but um, the eight's been been everything that the uh, six was for me. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah, still that's old. Have, I, that's four years old with electronics. That's pretty old. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a huge step up. I noticed from the three to the five, and then the five. The four. I I had a three, and then I went to the four, and there yeah. was a big step. Yeah, there was. It it was. I was a lot happier with the with the four. Uh, I'm. I still like it. All right. Um, until it, you know, craps craps out on me, then I'm gonna keep using it. Yeah, as long as it's working, I guess. Yeah. Some of the apps are a little slow now. Some of the newer newer age apps go a little slow, but I can deal with that as long as it's not 
you know, freezing it up. What what sort of what sort of apps making it go slow? Um, Skype actually on there sometimes yeah. will freeze it up. Um, I know I Waze. We've talked about being a bulky yeah, app. Yeah, Waze that just that yeah, even Waze the, sometimes the traffic the one for um, traffic and directions. That thing it's. I don't even use that. I use well, I mean, real, Google Maps is actually really good on it. Yeah, Google Google Maps, Google Maps now uses the data from Waze. Yeah, they um, do in order to help route you the best way. Yeah, they, they tell you they better. tell you if there's accidents. Uh, and if you don't, they don't tell you if there's cops though. I've noticed. If <laughs> yeah, it's prob- they probably decided not to get into all that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of legal talk about that, but yeah, Waze is great if you've got um, if you're just driving. You know, if you're a passenger and you're running navigation and you're uh, trying to do something else on your phone, it's you know yeah. you definitely feel the difference. Um, yeah, there's there's a few apps that are on there that I, I don't care for too much, but and I still have these preloaded Sprint apps that I can't get rid of that every now and then crash. I don't know that they're taking up a lot of resources, but it's just disconcerting to know that I can't control the stuff that's actually on the phone. Yeah, that that's one of the if good, I don't have good Facebook, reasons to buy a, uh, one of the unlocked phones directly from Samsung. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about all the the preloaded garbage they put into them. Verizon does the same thing. Yeah. Speaking of which, you see Sprint uh, is having a merger with T-Mobile. I wonder if that'll go through though. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I heard too. that it's probably going to get shot down. Yeah. I, I actually thought I heard that that may have already. Um, that's a pretty big deal because for anyone that's on Sprint and T-Mobile. Oh, well, maybe it hasn't been. It hasn't been. Uh, yeah. No, I heard it still was going, still. Yeah. I heard it was still all all go right now, but. Uh, yeah, that'd be good for that'd be good for me. I don't know if it'd be good or bad for competition though. Like, you know, well, they're the on more, two completely the different networks, right? One's GSM, one CD. Was it CD? I uh, yeah, I think CDMA, so. or is that like the, a drug? C, uh, CDMA. CDMA. Is, okay. Uh, yeah, CDMA is um, a network. What's the what's that what's that date rape drug? <laughs> C it, a roofie? Yeah, yeah. It's got a it's got a name like that. Oh, I don't know. Uh Anyway, yeah, they're on two different networks. But I guess the uh, what they're considering 5G is that technology is coming out soon too. Yeah, to be able to really it's speed already been, up. Already been available in uh, uh, Japan, I think, for quite a, quite a while. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's it's nice with all these upgrades. You're getting faster connections, faster uh, data transmissions able to do stuff like this podcast and stream your well, phones and everything else yeah that's one thing that i want to definitely see if we can do it you know we we're talking about trying to do a uh, podcast from st pete um yeah. the st st pete p1 and that would be over our cell phone so yeah probably wouldn't be able to do full quality but be fun to see what we uh could put out do 480p yeah yeah Old, i mean that's uh, that's plenty i doubt many people are watching this on a big screen high definition yeah no Well, uh, you got anything else to add for uh, no, this week? No, not not really. Um, you know, if you have a Sea-Doo, check us out on Um If you're looking to soup up your ski, check us out on PWCExtreme.com. We are, we're always coming out with new videos on our YouTube channel. So if you're watching on Facebook, yeah, we do have a YouTube channel too. Just type in PWC Muscle. If you're watching on YouTube, same thing. Type us in on, on Facebook. Um, other than that, man, I don't really have too much. Well, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to the Tampa Bay Rum Company. They're the home of Gaspar's Rum. They have a cool tasting uh, a distillery tour that's in Ebor, and uh, good place to check out. And yeah, uh, I didn't know they're doing that. Now is that yeah, a new thing? Uh, within the past uh, couple months, they're open on. I think they take Monday and Tuesday off, but they're yeah. open Wednesday through the rest of the weekend. Yeah, and it's it's uh, good rum made right here in Tampa. Yeah, if you're ever if you're ever in Ebor, check out Gaspar. That's one of my favorite places in Ebor. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll catch you next week, hopefully. <laughs> for Joe Zamataro and Greg Hall, see you later, guys.